Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, comic fans of all ages, welcome to part two of Suicide Squad Discussion, starring... Well, Not Sally. Fire Engine Red Not Sally. Sally. <laughs> Sally. No, and Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> Shirley. Yes. Not Shirley. Don't call me Shirley. And <laughs> Red Shirt Dude. I, I always die every episode. I was going to say, are you going to be dead? Yeah. So... Since this is part two, we're going to repeat a little bit more. We're going to have spoilers, and we quite possibly may have a little foul language. So get your ears yep. ready for a little discussion. So, quick recap of part one, in case you didn't actually watch it and you're just tuning in because you love my flash shirt. Um, we talked about uh, June Moon, Rick Flag, Killer Croc, Deadshot, Katana, Boomerang, Diablo, Slipknot, and Amanda Waller. We covered all those characters in... The first part, because that's, um, they dominated the first part of the actual movie. Well, that was the Suicide Squad in general. Yeah, that was the squad. But this time... Off and on. Off and on. We're going to talk about um, Joker and Harley Quinn, who has been most of the debate about this movie anyway. Now, <sighs> first things first, the actor, actress that played actress. Harley was phenomenal. Margot Robbie. If we had a little bit more of the higher pitch accent, it would have been awesome. Yeah. But she did get a little bit of the New York in her. Yeah. So we there's something in that. But other than that, her acting was great. Yeah, I don't I don't have much to say in the way of her portrayal. Um, I think the way she actually pulled off Harley Quinn on the screen was mm -hmm. great. Uh, I just I have a little bit of an issue, like you said, with uh, the voice pitch and the actual costume, like. I, I, I think it's bullshit that, like, such a massive character, I don't care, whatever, um, he said massive. has to pander, like, to, like, to teenage jerk-offs in the corner. Basically, Hollywood sex sells, we understand this, and we're both kind of feminists yeah, and that's, in... Like, I understand that's Although she's sexy as hell, I'm just gonna... She's hot. Yeah, that's, that's fine. But that's, she could pull the hotness off without the hot pants. Exactly! Like, you don't need to have thigh-high shorts on... To but pull off your attack. As I explained stupid. to Matt, I said we've gotten here, I've got Harley Quinn, there's this right here. I think what they're trying to do with the hot pants is when she's rolling derby Harvey Harvey Harley. Roll the Derby Harvey. <laughs> yeah. My name is Harvey. I'm so glad I'm not drunk. No. So I think that's where they're going with that. Although, like you said, there's no uniformity. Yeah, to what exactly. She's wearing. Like she's she's wearing a shirt that says Daddy Little Monster and some hot pants. Like well, there's no purpose for that. There's not. They did do they did show a little bit of stuff as nice little Easter eggs to us. Exactly. Like the, the, um, there was a pretty good montage for Easter eggs, but at the same time, like, they could have still... They had her gun? Yeah, they had her gun. Whatever. She used it. She used it a lot, actually, which is surprising. But they could have given her, like, I don't know, a pair of yoga pants with that classic print on it. Something. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, they there, have are, done there more are plenty that. of ways they could have gone. Okay. Because one of the fight scenes in New York where, the, where she's jumping around, all Those you heels. see is... All you see is her ass cheeks. That's all you see. I'm just She's like... She's got a nice, firm butt. But that's not the point. Th 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 that's what we're trying to say. Is that if you're going in for it, you're going in for the movie, and I think it should be secondary. Yes. Of visual appearance, yes. which, as we know, Hollywood is a society. If this was someone who was not super sexy... Yep. Would not have played the character. Yep. But if it was a guy's character, they do not care how ugly the person is. And that's just how it goes. And There's we know how it is. We hate it. armor and sweet shit everywhere. But chicks get this. Like, come on. Like, even in MMOs, it's fucking stupid. It like, is. you'll have this big-ass, bulky piece of armor sitting on a shelf. You'll go pick it up, and it's a bra. Like, bro, come on. What the fuck? <laughs> so Death is not gender-exclusive. Neither should armor. So this is one of our big beefs about Harley. Is that they've done that. They said that this entire movie... As much as it is, it shouldn't pander to just sexuality. Yeah, it shouldn't. And I've seen a lot of movies like, just in the past couple of years that are based on, you know, things from that kind of world, you know? And right. it's fine, except for when it becomes a bigger property. And then it's just like, okay, the bigger production company we are, the less clothes she has to be wearing. Why? Because sex sells, kid, and we gotta sell sex. Now, Let's something stop. else I am actually interested in that they DC may have done decent was their portrayal of Wonder Woman in Batman vs Superman. Yeah, and even her costume there was a big point of contention. But you have to remember what she wore on television. That's true. 
Yeah. So they're not really changing up too much. Yeah, I see. I don't really care about Wonder Woman that much because that's what her costume normally has been anyway. Right. That, like, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. She can get away like, with there's it. There's barely been it any variation with her costume anyway. You know, but with Harley Quinn, like her most popular costume was the Jester costume. Right. And that got kind of thrown away a couple of years ago for this stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like it. Oh yeah. It, it changes well, we depending on who's writing for that character. It also changed as the people were getting older who were originally watching. Which, as people who are Harley fans know, that Harley got introduced in the Batman yes. animated series. Yes. And she never was on the page until after that. Yep. So that created her not. And she was never intended to be as big as she was. But people started loving her. Yep. And then they kind of had the hospital, and I think that's what happened with the sexualization of her. Is that they're like, this is my Harley, I want to see her in this. I think that's where it went, because she's yeah. a great character. She's, she's a great character, she's, even even fully clothed. Like, why not just stick with that? And we'll talk with, about Joker, about your thoughts on Joker first, but another uh, thing we need to do is about their relationship. <laughs> so yeah. That there's a big issue with their relationship, because we know that Joker... Has no feelings. He nope. is a complete sociopath. And this, this right here actually feeds he, into one of my Joker theories. Right, and we'll go. Yes. I said we'll go into that. But it, this movie gives Joe gives Joker feelings for her. Yes. He actually cares for her. Yes. And in actuality, all he is doing is using her. He's her puppet master. But I think they're trying to make fans happy, and they need a relationship somewhere. They need the love. They need to have. A what reason about, for her to be doing what she's doing. I mean, but there's already a relationship in the movie, so this one is kind of just, like, secondary, in my opinion. But this is what they're doing with that. Excuse me. But I also think that they are kind of backpedaling on the Stockholm Syndrome issue. In a way where, you know, you fall in love with your captor. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually really upset about that, because that was one of the, the defining characteristics of that relationship. Oh, yes, no, exactly. But that's what this and, movie is doing. And to take that away from something as iconic as Joker and Harley Quinn backslaps the fans. But it's really, okay, from what I'm gathering, from reading from friends, people, and, if you know, if you have your say and you want to have your say on it, go for it. But there's a couple things that I've come in yeah. about, and... People are, we're getting worried because it's too abusive. And that's exactly what the Joker and Harley relationship is, is abusive. And it's been Literally. like that for decades. Correct. But they were trying to minimize it. They're trying to tone things down. To not upset. Going in the future. But at the same time, you're retconning all of the history yes. between those two characters. Uh, between, the, okay. Stockholm Syndrome between Joker and Harley. She's a therapist. She's so the therapist. fact that she doesn't realize what's going on means he's that good. Makes it that much more interesting yes. because she is a therapist. She's a She should have known better. A psychiatrist. So she knows what's going on but doesn't realize it. That's why people were so infatuated by that story because she should have known what was going on from the start. Right. So taking that out, it makes him more of a villain by doing that. Yeah, it it vilifies him even more, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make the the connection between them any stronger. It doesn't. Hmm. It's just... They you're just flooding them, the pool with nonsense. They, they gave a romance that was traditionally one-sided. Yeah. And Harley always will do anything she will for Joker. But Joker, he wouldn't nope. do what he does in this movie. Nope. He just wouldn't. As we go on that, speak. Okay. Three Joker theories. My number one Joker theory, actually, this is... Uh, I guess this would be number three uh, on the important scale, uh, so going upwards, um, that this Joker isn't the actual Joker. This is someone pretending to be the Joker. And that is? Because he doesn't act the way the Joker does. Um, he pretends to actually, oh, I guess pretend is a, is a strange word in this scenario, but he cares for Harley, whereas the previous Joker's, just thought she was someone to be used like a tool, like she said earlier. Listen, he, he's not a true sociopath. Yeah, he's, he's not truly, like, like he's actually there. Like, he knows what he's doing. And the Joker would just, would just do things because he wanted to. He didn't put any forethought into it. He was, mm -mm. like, he was just, like, this crazy person who would just kind of go into the world and just blow things up. Or I'm take bored, things. so let's get Batman riled up. That's yeah. That's pretty much what the Joker that's, does. That's the Joker. <laughs> but this Joker, like, actually plans things. And he never actually had plans this, like, this... this, this yeah, this yeah. Joker plans... I'm not quite sure. Like I said, he went 
with the whole club scene with Common. Well, I don't even know his character, and I apologize. At least I know the actor. Yeah, I don't know who that or was supposed to be. Or slash rapper. But he does this to, to get the game. He, yeah. he gets to get people. Yeah. When the Joker, the real Joker, he people just, are coming with me or not, you know, you're going to follow me or not, I don't care. He would just take over other people's territory without even saying anything. Like, he would just go right. and kill someone's leader and be like, all right, you guys work for me now. Like, all right, boss. And, so, and this is something that I've brought up. And yeah. this is something that um, I know I've had, uh, I wouldn't say discussion, but I was hearing that I don't quite see it as that. He's wearing too much bling. Yeah. He's playing all that, and I say, personally me, is I think that he's doing what it takes to get what he needs. He is not actually materialistic. And this feeds into, uh, I guess, this is kind of like my main theory about the Joker. Right. This, this, this Joker, Jared Leto's Joker, is actually Jason Todd, who got his ass beat, almost killed by the Joker. And since... Uh, he's actually taking, well, in my head, he's taking over for that Joker. The original Joker is dead. Okay, so he's taking over, and you're mean taking over as in he has stepped into place. He's not pretending to be the Joker. He actually thinks he's the Joker. He thinks he's the Joker because the previous Joker is no longer doing anything. He's, he, he's, he's left town. He's skipped. You know, because um, we've heard about in BVS where uh, Batman said he's... He's had a history of psychotic people dressing up in clown outfits. Right. You know, so so, it's so an we've epidemic. talked it's about the epidemic. Joker. Exactly. We've talked about that before, and we have um, the one Robin costume hanging up in, in his back cave, you know. So there's already some kind of story there, and I think this Joker is just playing a part in the full story of the rest of DC movie they're going to tell us. Like, because this Joker we have now isn't acting like any kind of Joker we've ever seen, like, by any comparison. And actually, if, if you check out um, MatPat's video on The Film Theorist, which I'm going to send a link down below so you can, can read it as well, or watch it as well, it's um, his comparison between this Joker, Cesar Romero, um, Jack Nicholson, and Heath Ledger, um, is if this Joker is the same as one of those three. And he explains it. It's all a kind of big clusterfuck of details. But yeah, I think the Joker we have now in Jared Leto is actually Jason Todd taking up the Joker mantle because the previous Joker skipped town or was killed. And to say that, knowing that it is that, Jared Leto actually did a well performance yes. for that. Yes, So yes. if you have taking any Taking that on into it, account, exactly. if you think that this... It's not the Joker you were expecting. Yes. This is one of the possible reasons because yes. he did a great job of performing yes. that. So if you think about that theory as being true... This theory, like, makes this performance amazing as a brand new Joker that we haven't seen before. But if you think it's any kind of continuation as the Joker crown... It would make no sense. It, you're going to be kind of let down because this Joker kind of feels like a pretender. But then knowing shade. Leto, he's a method actor just like Ledger yes. was. So it would actually make sense if he obsessed over a specific Joker. Yeah. So, okay. Um, just like in the, the Batman Beyond, um, that was... Um, kind of a Joker virus going around, or like a DNA implant, something like that. And Terry, no. Anyway, someone in that in that cartoon became the Joker, mm -hmm. and he was completely different from his actual normal counterpart. But he referenced a lot of the same thing Jared Leto referenced as far as behavior. So, so those, you had those tales. Yeah, those tales. Look, so the so the Joker Jared Leto portrays is a lot like the Joker from Batman Beyond. A lot like it, but that's because I watch that cartoon growing up. So, but yeah. So there's the Joker pretend theory and the uh, um, was Jason Todd. So two theories. I guess it kind of blended together. You had said possible three. Was there a third one, or are we making this third one up? No, I, <laughs> I mean like there was a third one, but I kind of just blended two together. Okay, that's so, what I wanted to make sure on yeah. that one. So our basic breakdown on thoughts. Uh, Harley and Joker. Harley and Joker in the movie, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, they're not what you expect them to no, be. No, not by any but standard. But take them how they are. Actually, her personality is Harley's personality. Yeah, her personality is all there. I'm not going to deny that at all. But his personality, if you go on theory, is all there. But if it's not part of that theory, yeah. then he studied the wrong Joker. Yeah. So he, he's a little bit more emotional. He's... he's there's an entire rainbow of Jokerness going on in one character, 
it feels like he's trying to capture all the best parts of other Jokers. Which is a possibility. But with my theory, I think it makes a lot of sense because he's trying to portray a lot of the best crime bosses of Gotham City mm-hmm. while being his own crime boss. Right. Does that make sense? He was literally trying, he was doing the crime boss yeah, thing. Yeah, he, he felt like a lot of um, Maroni, no, not Maroni. Um, Rooney? Roman Sionis. Oh, I was going to say what? Because Sionis was just always tossing money everywhere. Always. No matter what he did, he was just like, okay, I can buy this, boom. And like with... With Joker's golden jacket and his teeth and his tattoos, like it just felt like he was imitating all of Gotham's best criminals. But that's why I was saying that I think that that was just for him to get what he wanted. That that may not necessarily been what he originally was yeah, doing. That, I understand that, and I see what you're saying. But from a personal perspective, even seeing all the Joker's that I've seen, that doesn't make any sense, especially in the way DC makes its villains. It just doesn't make any sense. But you gotta From remember, a personal perspective, that's all. But you got to remember, DC does not have a big say as much as they should. I DC, mean, I get that. I understand right. that. But so, just, so that's what DC... Yeah, you have your theories, I have mine. Right. But I don't personally agree with your theory. Done. 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 Lost. Tell me what I'm you done. think about my Joker theories, one and two, about Jason Todd being it, or Jared Ludo Joker being uh, the new but same Joker, if that makes sense. Tell me in the comments below and we'll talk about it. I think that wraps up our Harley Joker love, not love, fest thing. Yeah, I'm still kind of just pissed about it. But hey. I'm not as pissed, but you know, I get everything. Yeah. So, Jen out. I love tacos. <laughs>